Well, well, well. Thank what you for taking some time and jumping on with us here. So thank you so much for having me. Do you want me to call you Marissa? Do you want me to call you MJ? Like, what do you? You know, what do you, what do you it's a by? complicated yeah. question. I know, right? Um, the old, the old OGs know me as Marissa, but most yeah. people call me MJ now. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Of course, the the majority of people that are going to be seeing and hearing this podcast will know you from being on radio and you know, part of the the Casey Clark show. Yeah. Uh, which seems like a very good place to start with us here tonight. So wh- why radio? Why, why'd you get into radio? Um, my passion for radio actually started all the way back in high school. Um, I kind of found my groove in high school when I got into the theater program. I just loved being on stage. I love performing, but I cannot sing and I cannot dance. So I was like, hmm, how else can I be the center of attention? Oh, broadcasting. <laughs> right. Okay, interesting. So when you were that age, did you try to get into radio? Like, were you volunteering at all? Or like, what got you down that path to take the the BCIT course and, you know, to get to where you are today? Well, when I was in theater, we did a show called Rent and Jasmina actually, who is in Vancouver Radio, she was had a little minor part in the show because she actually went to Garibaldi and knew my theater teacher. And when she came in, I was just in awe of her. And so I was like, wow, radio. So I started doing my research and I found BCIT. It's like one of the best programs to do for radio. And so right out of high school, I applied for the part-time courses. So I did nine part-time courses because my parents wanted to make sure that I really wanted to do radio because I was still quite shy. And then after the part-time courses, I fell in love and I applied for full-time and got in right away so I was pretty lucky that's crazy so you're shy and what what gets you over the hump to be a radio personality because I mean that takes some it takes some guts it does and it's it's weird because I still am quite shy and introverted so people often ask me they're like how do you do what you do but my safe place and my comfort place is on the radio I don't know why I will tell the world everything when the mic is on I have no filter I am not shy at all I don't know what that just seems like my my happy safe place yeah. so I don't know why that is I feel like it's an outlet or something oh definitely it is 100% and, and you're feeling pretty good right now where you are right yeah I, I feel so lucky to be where I'm at on a three-person morning show Um, It's regional, so it's across Kelowna and Kamloops and parts in between. So I just feel really lucky to be on like a really solid show with Casey Clark, who is such an incredible broadcaster. And Dana Thompson. Freaking legend. Oh, I know. Trust me. When I first met Casey, I was, I couldn't believe it. (laughs) No kidding. What's like, what's he like? He must be pretty cool. Like he seems pretty cool from the radio show, but like outside of radio, he must be pretty cool, right? Yeah, unbelievable. Like one of the most solid humans I've ever met. And I feel so lucky every single day to get to learn from him, especially in the pandemic. I honestly don't know how I would have done radio during this crazy two years without Casey. Um, He's just kept so calm. He just lets things roll off his back. Um, And that's what a pro broadcaster does, right? They can take whatever's thrown at them and just handle it. And I don't think without his guidance, I would have been able to do that. So I've learned so much from Casey, especially this year. Yeah, that's great. And so it's a country station that you're at. Is that, is that your wheelhouse? Like, are you a country girl? Are you? I mean, I'm from Maple Ridge, so. So (laughs) yes, the answer is yes. Yes, I love country. You did country radio too for a while. I did country for, yeah, probably about three and a half, almost four years years up in prince george and i yeah. and i'm not a country guy i'm, I'm full rock no. right so yeah uh but then, then you know doing country made me a better broadcaster oh your screen just Sorry. popped off um so are you a are you a big music geek then like are you know what yes. was what was it like as a kid growing up in your house like uh, what, what are your parents playing and stuff yeah so my dad is a huge rock fan yeah. um in our house actually he has the whole wall of beatles vinyl all on display so he's a huge like Beatles fan so I grew up on a lot of that stuff um and then my own personal taste started coming through like when I was in probably that 13 year old stage and I've always been a diehard hip-hop fan I just love rap so um that's kind of like where I found my passion for music and then as I got into my 20s 
I was commuting a lot for work and this is really random, but I was getting so sick of my own music that I was like, oh, I'm gonna listen to something completely different, country. And I just fell in love with country and then I listened to that nonstop. So I'm, I have a passion for music for all different types, for sure. Interesting. So and, uh, that's JRFM then that you'd probably be listening to at that point, right? Yeah, I did when I was living in Vancouver, yeah. All right, so uh, is there, not to get to like, what's your one year plan and five year, but like, what do you have a drive to get to a major market? Are you, are you happy where you are? Like, um, I'm really happy where I'm at right now. I think, you know, radio is such a hustle that you're always planning your next move. And so from school, like I knew I had to go to a small town. So I did Smithers for my first job. That's my first job, BVLV. Yeah, the moose. Yeah, I don't know what it was called, but yeah. The mighty BV. That was my first. That was the afternoon host. That was my first job in radio. That was that's my first Shut job in radio. Up. Afternoons in Smithers. Yeah. How long were you there for? Three months. Like oh, it was like quick. right away. There was a job in Prince George, and I begged and pleaded and like yes. kicked, screamed, and I got that gig. But yeah, that was my first job. That's crazy. We both had the same first job in radio. Afternoons in Smithers. What the heck? Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a great start, clearly. <laughs> How long were you there for? 11 months. Okay. So just under a year as well. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty quick, but it was, yeah, it was definitely the biggest learning experience, especially when you're right out of school and you're just like thrown into actual radio. Totally uh, right. It was a great place to learn because I got to do kind of everything, promo on yeah. air. And then halfway through, I actually switched to morning show. And then I was doing like music logs and scheduling. So for my first job, it was like pretty full on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What was your first concert you went to? Oh, ever or with work? Ever. Ever. Oh, Jonas Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I still love them. I saw them last uh, or the October before the pandemic too. So I was like, it's weird that I saw them at 14 and then again at 26, but. And were they still just as good at 26? As yes. They were and just, just as cute too. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what, what's what, like we think back before you're in radio and you're just like a kid and stuff like, what was your first memory of, you know, that involves radio? Well, my first memory involving radio is actually quite funny because I used to not be able to fall asleep without having the radio on. Oh. I needed the radio like all of elementary school. And then I used to have a little uh, MP3 player where I would record all the songs yeah. off the radio and I would get so frustrated when the DJs would talk over the intro. Um, so that's kind of like my first memory of radio. And I loved the Beat 94.5. Like that was my station right. girl. Kid Carson. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. So now you're the person that's talking over the intros and annoying everybody else. I don't yeah. think I don't think kids are recording them on MP3 players anymore. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> probably not. What What do you think the best thing is about radio? Best thing about radio, I would say that you get to meet so many different people from different walks of life, and whether it's musicians or people in the community or other coworkers, like everyone has such a different story. And I think it's really cool that radio connects you with people and you get to make a difference. I think that's my favorite part is, you know, sometimes I'm like, wow, like we're not doing brain surgery. Like does radio, like, does anyone really care? But oh, people, people care. often, people care. People like care. you, you make their day every single day and you don't know the impact that you have until you really sit and think about it. You're like, wow, like, what we do is important. Like we're sharing news, we're making people laugh. We're part of everyone's mornings. It's it's really cool. Yeah, you know when I when I got let go from CFOX in in the summer of 2014, I mean it took probably a couple took couple two three years before people were like cool with it. I guess you know like the, why yeah. did you get let go and like what happened and for years mm -hmm. and years. And of course now that I got the podcast, it kind of you know that's grab their attention and i can you know now they can listen to that instead yeah, yeah pe people care about radio hosts for sure they do 100 yeah, percent. and and how do you think radio is doing right now in in 2021 you know with the the competition of like podcasting and, and satellite radio and, and and xm and all that like how do you think radio is doing right now i honestly think radio is doing great i mean if anything 
the pandemic has showed us that people still need their local news and they want local comfort. Like they want your voice. They want their personality. They want your comfort. You can't get that on Spotify. Like you can't, you can listen to your favorite podcast, but is Joe Rogan going to reply to you? Is Joe Rogan, like, I love it, like respect, but like, he's not, you know, giving you that local aspect that I think radio does like every morning in your ear, right? Right. Like Joe Rogan, it's not going to talk about the Kelowna Rockets. Yeah, exactly. And I think that is still super important. And it's been interesting being part of a regional show because we aren't super local. We can't be Kamloops versus Kelowna. So we do have to be more generalized. But I think there's still that local sense that people know that, okay, these personalities care about our communities. And I think that is really important. Mm -hmm. You know, MJ, I was wasn't going to ask this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. It's kind of a Please. just kind of a cliche, cheesy question. But what, okay. what sort of advice would you give somebody that's looking to get into the industry? I would say, well, I always say like my number one piece of advice is be willing to move. I think that is seriously <laughs> what launched my career was totally. so many people I graduated with didn't want to leave Vancouver. And when I look now at how many people are still on radio, it's the people who were like, you know what, I'm going full in and I'm going to move. I'm going to sacrifice my weekends. I'm going to do street team. I'm going to put myself out there. It might seem like a lot of work in the beginning, but it will just excel you so much further. Like if you just work hard and be a good person, I think that's, that's my number one piece of advice. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, this is coming from both of us did the exact same job. We moved to Smithers, a town of like less than 5,000 people. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. All right. Let's get outside of radio for a second. Yeah. Kind of get to know you a bit more. Uh, which TV shows are you binging right now? Like what can you not get enough of? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'm not much of a TV person, but I do have a really bad uh, habit of watching um, reality TV shows. So I'm, I'm really into The Bachelor. It's kind of my guilty pleasure. Oh my God. Yeah, it's so bad. I just love other people's drama. <laughs> yeah i, I think Other the people's problems it's addicting to watch well you watch that and you're like well shit maybe my problems aren't actually that bad <laughs> right you're like well at least i don't have like three boyfriends and <laughs> totally yeah. wow so you're you're the trash tv then i know i hate to admit it <laughs> what's the worst job you've had oh that's a great question okay this is i'm admitting something here but um, when I was living in Whistler, I actually cleaned houses on, oh. on the side for rich people. And it was interesting, but that was probably the worst job. <laughs> yeah. Sucks cleaning. Good yes. pay though, probably. Hey. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And it definitely it funded my little ski trip. So that's all that mattered at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of sports, what, what's your favorite sport to play? Uh, I grew up playing soccer. Oh. So that's my favorite sport to play. Yeah. What to watch? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of watching any sports. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, one app on your phone. Which one is it? If you can only have one. Uh, oh, Instagram. Instagram then. Instagram. So that's where you're most active. Yeah, I would say. Um, I've gotten really into as well, like influencing right now. So it's been really fun, like working with different brands and, and trying to get some recognition for their products too. So it's been kind of a fun challenge during the pandemic to, to get new clients and work on like that business side of things. So I, well, I definitely it's tricky, enjoy right? it. Yeah, it is so, tricky. So what kind of advice would you give for that? I mean, that's something that I've been doing since getting out of radio and it's been yeah. just fucking tough. Like it's been hard, right? So give yeah. some advice on that for people like to maybe get a sponsor or something like that absolutely yeah i once my biggest advice is once you get one sponsor um and you do well other brands will want to work with you they'll see what you're doing so it's just kind of landing that first one and to get that i would say just really make sure on your feed you're representing like who you are and what you stand for so for me the first brands that came to me were tourism camloops because i was already posting so much about being local that mm. they ended up bringing me on as a client and paying me to go around town trying different foods activities so they paid me to post and try cool activities how like how awesome is that and then the other big sponsorship i got was through cobia beauty which is a hair um 
salon. So I love my hair. I was already posting all about my hair. So just, I would say, stay true to yourself, post about what you like and people will notice. And hey, send a few DMs. Like what's the worst they can say? Sorry, we don't have the budget for that. But I truly think think, uh, Instagram marketing is the new way that some businesses are going to spend their marketing dollars. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm a proof of that. I mean, that yeah. So many people were like, oh, what are you going to do when you get out of radio? Like, where are you going to go? Like, is it Kamloops? Is it like Lethbridge? Yeah. Like, are you going to go to out east? I'm like, I don't even know. I don't even know if I'm going to get back to radio. Yeah. And uh, then I'll like you, like shoot some DMs, shoot, shoot emails to people you know, that's, a, that's a GM or an owner of a business. And you never know. Like, the only thing they're going to say is yes or no. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how much uh, people are open to it. Hey, oh, totally. It's crazy. I mean, that, you know, that made it so that BCIT asked me to come and and be an instructor for them. It's not because of my radio career. They're like, we think what you're doing with the podcast, and like all these sponsors and your your hosting events and all that, like, that's what we like. Sure, you're a good person on the air. But like, we like what you've done after radio. Yeah. So yeah, it's you really, yeah, you really adapted and like, you're kind of the first person that I've seen kind of take full charge of like the podcasting and sponsorships. And it, it does seem like the new way of the world of, of how things are going. And so it's yeah. cool that your students get a, a sight of that, like ahead of the game, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Hey, are you a gambler? No. <laughs> are you? <laughs> uh yeah i'm a little bit like oh you know not really like i don't go to casinos here the only time i ever go to casinos is like vegas and stuff but like i'll gamble more like bet not gamble like i'll bet buddies okay. like hey this you know ufc fight this weekend i'm gonna take buddy you take buddy it's not tons like 20 bucks or whatever right but yeah no, i'm just curious yeah i can't remember what it was that sparked that you said something and i was like yeah i wonder if that's gambling or not um, funny story. So I volunteer every Thursday with seniors. So sweet. Um, but they give you little gifts because they're so precious. And one lady gave me a scratch and win. And I never play scratch and win. So I was like, oh, thank you so much. I scratch it. I win 30 bucks. Come on. So I know. And I don't know. I'm like, oh, that's great. So I go to cash it in. And my rule of thumb is kind of like, well, I didn't have this money before. Like, why don't I just buy $30 worth of scratch and wins the lady at the counter was like no you're not gonna do that like this is really rare I was like oh okay so I took the 30 bucks nice I could have been a millionaire though (laughs) (laughs) awesome all right uh MJ I'm gonna respect your time I'll ask you a few more questions here and then we'll wrap it up um if you could have a superpower which power would you want to have um I would love to be invisible I think that'd be such a great power just be a little spy in the background when you want to be just disappear be be shy and quiet I think it'd be a great power little fly on the wall unfortunately though maybe you might hear some shit that you wouldn't want to hear and yeah that's true uh, yeah um what's your career highlight so far career highlight um definitely getting the job with the Casey Clark show. Yeah. Um, I, that's just one of my proudest moments so far in radio. I'm just so honored to work with Casey Clark and Dana. And it's just been such a blast every day. Like my cheeks hurt from smiling so much. So that's a pretty big win in my books. Yeah, totally. And so how did you get the gig? Like where was that right from Smithers? Uh, that was from Whistler. And it was okay. pretty cool because they found me. I didn't apply. They they contacted me, which was a pretty big first in my career. So I felt pretty honored. And it was my first rated market, which was huge for me. And it was just all very exciting. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, last question. It's an oddball. Okay. Do you have a near death story? Like where Ooh. you could have maybe died? Not necessarily where you're like floating over your body or whatever. But <laughs> like, you know, like Ooh. somewhere you're like, holy crap, I could have died there. Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I'm sure there is plenty that I just don't even realize. Um, oh, for sure. That's the reason I ask it is because most people, like 90%, I've interviewed probably 700, 800 people since starting this up. And like yeah. most 90% have like the fucking craziest stories. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. I guess I'm just not that cool, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Can't think of anything? No. It'd be coming to you. Where where do you see? I guess I've got four questions then. Where do you see yourself 
like five years from now? I said I wasn't going to ask it, but I'm going to. I know. Uh, I love it. Ideally, you know what? I would love to be in somewhere like Toronto and I would love to be doing a morning show with a group of people. And then ideally something like entertainment tonight uh, in the afternoon. So that would be my dream. So working towards that. Nice. Head down and grind. Keep going. You're kicking ass. Yeah. It's super Thank cool so to much. see. And, and what a treat to know that we started at the same job. I know, industry. that makes me so happy. I, I same, I had no idea. So thank you again for jumping on tonight. Thank um, you. you are MJ underscore on air on Instagram. Do you have a Twitter yes. account? Yeah, everything across the board is all MJ underscore on air. Okay, cool. Great, I guess uh, we'll see you online and, and have a great night. Awesome, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it.